An ancient Greek philosopher named Epicurus believed we don't need extravagant pleasures to be happy. Luxurious vacations to distant places, amassing excessive wealth and possessions, or gaining power through politics won't bring lasting satisfaction. In fact, these pursuits often make us desire more and drain our time, energy, and sometimes our morality. Epicurus himself chose a simple life, enjoying weak wine, bread, and cheese while discussing philosophy with friends. The video, Why Letting Go is True Wealth, aimed to define a philosophical view on minimalism. People use the term minimalism in various contexts. In music, it's a style marked by simplicity. Minimalistic art employs only simple and abstract forms. Recently, there's been a rise in adopting minimalism as a lifestyle by reducing possessions to eliminate unnecessary clutter. These forms of minimalism share a common trait, using the minimal to achieve a goal, whether it's creating music or art or enhancing the living environment. But can we apply this principle to our overall well-being? How can we live happy, prosperous lives without spending much? How can we be satisfied at no cost? How can we be wealthy with just the essentials? Several philosophers have shed light on such questions. This video explores different views on wealth, desire, and pleasure, showing that being rich can be quite inexpensive. Having lots of money and material possessions doesn't necessarily make someone rich. Often, though not always, wealthy people desire more while fearing loss. They live with stress, mistrust of others, and sometimes complete isolation from the less financially fortunate. These individuals may successfully amass material wealth but often, this achievement comes with significant sacrifices. For instance, someone working 80 hours a week has hardly any time to relax, leaving little time to spend with family and friends, which Epicurus believed to be a crucial source of well-being. Furthermore, a study in the American Journal of Industrial Medicine indicates that consistently working more than 40 hours a week harms our health, significantly increasing the risk of coronary heart disease. Another study published in the Journal of Occupational and Environmental Medicine, found that working over 45 hours a week for at least 10 years is linked to a higher risk of cardiovascular disease. Of course, not all wealthy people overwork, and not everyone who overworks is wealthy. But there is a correlation. Thomas Merton's book, The Way of Chuang Tzu, features the author's versions of Zhuang Zi's classic sayings. The Taoist philosopher noted how the world values money, reputation, long life, and achievement and condemns lack of money, low social rank, a bad reputation, and an early death. Over 2,000 years later, this remains unchanged. As Zhuangzi observed, people seek what the world values and avoid what it condemns. When deprived of what they seek, they often feel panic and despair. To quote, they are so concerned for their life that their anxiety makes life unbearable, even when they have the things they think they want. Their very concern for enjoyment makes them unhappy. The rich make life intolerable by driving themselves to acquire more and more money, which they cannot really use. In doing so, they become alienated from themselves and exhaust themselves in their own service, as though they were slaves of others." End quote. So, there appear to be significant downsides to the concept of working hard to play hard. Is the playing worth the work? And if it's not, and we decide not to chase what the world values, does that mean we are doomed to a miserable life? Or can we find simpler pleasures that offer the same satisfaction? Some people argue that the American transcendentalist philosopher Henry David Thoreau was a minimalist. But what are the inexpensive pleasures that Thoreau talks about? How can we enjoy life without spending much? Different people have different ideas of what constitutes a cheap pleasure, as pleasure varies for everyone, and what is considered cheap depends on one's situation. The 19th century author, geologist, and evolutionary thinker Robert Chambers mentioned in a journal that reading is a low-cost way to find joy. He stated, Reading, in fact, is nowadays almost as free as air. It would thus appear that all the best pleasures are the cheapest. Nature seems to tell us that we have only to restrain our wishes to what is good, pure, and elevating in order to be satisfied without cost. Chambers' suggestion aligns with Arthur Schopenhauer's views on pleasure. In one of his essays, Schopenhauer argued that the highest pleasures are those of sensibility or intellectual pleasures such as thinking, enjoying poetry, learning, reading, and meditating. According to Schopenhauer, all other pleasures, those not of the intellect, are of a lower kind and always satisfied at the cost of pain. Intellectual pleasures are often very inexpensive. Those who enjoy them can consider living in today's age a blessing, as intellectual resources are widely available and basically free. However, 
What Schopenhauer calls, lower pleasures can also be cheap. For example, enjoying a nice meal doesn't have to be expensive if you cook it yourself, especially when it's a simple meal, which Epicurus would support. Walking costs only muscular energy, and aside from that, it is free. What pleasure is most enjoyable and very affordable? Epicurus might have an answer. His philosophy differentiates between moving pleasures and static pleasures. Moving pleasures involve activity to satisfy a desire, like eating in a restaurant when hungry. Static pleasures occur when a desire is satisfied, such as the moment one is no longer hungry. According to Epicurus, the highest pleasures are the passive ones, meaning the absence of discomfort or simply contentment. Like Schopenhauer, Epicurus believed that moving pleasures require a lot of effort. Chasing after them can also be risky. Naturally, the amount of effort and risk involved depends on the pleasure itself. For instance, opening the fridge and grabbing some food doesn't require much effort and usually isn't very risky. However, traveling around the world demands that we earn and save a lot of money, move from place to place, negotiate with people, and stay safe in unfamiliar areas. Static pleasure, on the other hand, requires no effort at all. It's simply the feeling of contentment after our needs are met. Schopenhauer believed that happiness is largely about peace of mind and contentment. But to achieve this, we need to reduce a strong human impulse, which he called the will to live. This is challenging as it requires a level of asceticism that most people probably cannot achieve. So, how do we achieve static pleasure? Is it possible to be content often without becoming an ascetic? If Thoreau, Chambers, Schopenhauer, Zhuangzi, and Epicurus were alive today, they might agree that fulfilling ourselves through simple, affordable pleasures is the best approach. These pleasures are easy to find and widely available. Making them the source of our joy saves us from the stress we'd feel if only rare and expensive things could satisfy us. The cheaper our pleasures, the less time and effort we need to attain them, and the more we enjoy not wanting anything else. If this isn't the ultimate form of minimalism, then what is?